Let me ask you a question. Yes! Woo! If you don't love your children, <laughs> yes! Greetings humans and welcome back. In this video, we're gonna take a look at some recent developments with regard to food, agriculture, and the environment. If you're interested in this type of material, hit subscribe or don't. In this video, we'll talk a little bit about a new frontier for urban farming, more bullshit from Monsanto, a new pharmaceutical drug for peanut allergies, the discovery of forever chemicals in our pets, and how the decline in popularity of hunting is actually damaging conservation efforts. Anyone that's living in a major city knows just how limited space can be and how expensive food can be. In New York in particular, we see this exemplified. In an attempt to address these issues, as well as to protect against a potential storm surge, Aqua Arc is building a 158,000 square foot floating farm structure located off the Hunts Point Food Distribution Center in the Bronx. This facility will provide up to four acres of horizontal growing area, which is a scale that's otherwise unseen in New York City. Proximity to the food distribution center also reduces the impact of transport costs and environmental costs for the produce delivered. The EPA estimates that they can save between 30 and 70% on heating costs and 20 to 50% on cooling costs by growing on top of the water. And because this site will be located on top of the water, there will be no obstruction to natural sunlight. Despite a class action lawsuit with tens of thousands of plaintiffs going on right now and recent rulings against them, Monsanto, which is owned by Bayer now, is still sticking to their claim that glyphosate, the most common herbicide on the planet, is not in fact a carcinogen and is safe for human exposure. And thankfully for them, the Trump administration's fealty to the chemical industry knows no bounds. Don't worry guys, the Trump EPA has got us covered. And it's not like Monsanto or Bayer or the EPA have any kind of history of lying to the people. One in every 50 children in the United States is allergic to peanuts. The Food and Drug Administration approved the first ever pharmaceutical drug to treat peanut allergies. The drug, Palforzia, is made of peanut protein. In their tests, two thirds of patients were able to safely consume two peanuts after an entire year of treatment. Now the drug can't be considered a cure, but listen, it only costs $890 a month. It only costs $890 a month. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever had two peanuts after waiting an entire year to do so? It's worth it. Now, if you love your children, you'll pay $890 a month for that privilege. If you don't love your children, well, I guess there's another option. You can also feed your child small amounts of peanut flour, which retails for about $6 a pound. And that gradual exposure can help to immunize them in a similar way. And now for more great news. Just when you thought you were making a good choice by eating in places like Sweetgreen or Chipotle, it turns out that all of their bowls are riddled with forever chemicals, also known as PFAS. Now, not only are these fiber bowls not actually compostable, but they're poisoning you. If you haven't paid $17 for a salad that was also flooded with dangerous chemicals, you're just not an American millennial. Get with the program. And just when you thought this couldn't get worse, it turns out we're poisoning our pets too. <laughs> yes, nothing is sacred, nothing is safe. Yes, yes, yes. Woo, I fucking love it. I'm proud to be an American. Where at least I know I'm free. And finally, a decrease in the interest for hunting has actually caused problems for conservationists. Many state wildlife agencies get a lot of their funding for their conservation efforts from either permits and taxes on weapons and equipment or from fees paid for hunting licenses. And while more Americans are showing more interest in outdoor activities in general, the number of Americans who say that they hunt has gone down about 2 million from five years ago. These problems are only exacerbated by the current administration, which literally doesn't give a fuck about anything but money. The recent rollback of pollution controls on waterways put even a greater burden on states to protect wetland habitats. Now, some states are managing to increase the number of hunters by actually reaching out to Latino residents and making license applications available online. 
This obviously shows that it can be useful to destigmatize hunting and actually look at it as a potential for good when it comes to our environment. All right, guys, that's all for this one. I crank the content, you smash the like button. That's how this relationship works. I'll talk to you in the next one.